Good day, everybody. This is uh, Chris back again, and what I'd like to talk about today is uh, something known as the VDVT ratio. So let's see if I can go ahead and pull that up for you guys real quick, and uh, we'll go ahead and talk about this, the uh, VDVT ratio. All right, so let's do that. The VD, the VD, VT ratio. That is the dead space VD to tidal volume VT ratio. And there's a fairly easy way to figure um, this ratio or this fraction out. And basically what I do is I have to look at my arterial blood gas and I have to look at the PaCO2. Okay, I find the P A little a C O2. Alright. And then I have to find what my exhaled, so this is the carbon dioxide in the um, arteries, and then I subtract from that something called the PETCO2, um, that is the exhaled or the entidal carbon dioxide, and that is actually fairly easy to assess because uh, we can um, attach sensors to our advanced airway devices and uh, we can pick up or sense the exhaled carbon dioxide. So it's the PaCO2 minus the PETCO2, the entidal CO2, and then I divide that by the PaCO2. So the popular saying is PACO minus PACO divided by PACO. Um, and that is kind of an easy way of memorizing that. Paco minus Paco divided by Paco. So let's just plug in some numbers and see what we'll get here. So we know that a, a normal PaCO2 is going to be about 40 millimeters of mercury. And we also know that in a normal patient, the entitled CO2 is going to be somewhere around 5 less than that. The entitled CO2 is always going to be lower than the the arterial CO2 because that, that's the gradient that we need um, because we need a gradient um, where uh, carbon dioxide moves from the arteries to the alveoli to the atmosphere and if the entitled CO2 were ever to be higher than the arterial carbon dioxide well then then uh, CO2 would actually be entering or shifting into the body and that wouldn't be a, a great thing. Okay so 40 and we'll just say that the entitled CO2 is measured at 35 millimeters of mercury. All right. And then I'm going to divide all that again by the original PaCO2, the 40 millimeters of mercury. Okay. So 40 subtract 35 gives me 5. And then I just have 5 divided by 4. 40, and what I'll do is I will just pick that up right over here. So we have 5 divided by 40. Obviously, this is going to be a fraction. It'll be 0 0.125, or if I convert that into percentage, I just move this over to boom, boom, or 12.5%. Okay, so that is my dead space to tidal volume ratio of 12.5%. And in a normal person who's doing well, this ratio should be less than about 33%. Okay, it should be under 30, 33% or under. Um, some people will even say um, under 40%. It just kind of depends on who you're going with. Um, we know that we will start having, we know that we have some sort of issue at 40 to 60 percent, and we know that we have serious issues if our tidal volume to dead space ratios is above 60 percent. So, this is one of those quick and easy ratios that does, that can give us some information about what's going on with our patient. And I'm not going to talk about that in this video. Um, you'll have plenty of time to discuss uh, what's going on in your mechanical ventilation lectures, but I just kind of wanted to focus on actually how do you actually calculate that and in, in a general sense, what do the values mean? But the big thing that we need to know, at least for now, 
is that you really you want your VDVTs to be you know certainly less than 40 somewhere around 33 percent and you see we calculated this on a perfectly normal person uh, with a, a perfectly normal CO2 and an entitled CO2 and they're right at about 12.5 13 percent of VDVT um, and we know the higher we get the more problematic we get and when we put patients on ventilators we do add dead space uh, mechanical dead space and and that person may even have underlying physiological dead space as well just due to their disease process so you can see these VDVTs get rather high on very sick mechanically ventilated patients okay guys thanks for hanging in there I hope you found that helpful